Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, and welcome back to the Baseball Hide. I hope you like this video and smash that subscribe button so we are about to have the beginnings of the offseason. Um, so I'm recording this video, the, the Yankees winning 5-2 to two against the Dodgers in the, in the third inning, but the Dodgers scoring a lot of runs, so we'll see how that, that plays out, but in the next few days, uh, Baseball is going to be over, and probably, hopefully, very quickly for the Yankees. By the way, and then we're going to begin the process of rebuilding the Mets for next year. And uh, we know that they're going to be some really big free agents out there. It wasn't a lot last year; it kind of worked out pretty good. The Mets did not go crazy in the market, and now they're, they're, the predictions they're going to go nuts. <laughs> this is from SI.com. Now, before we get into this video. Hit the, again, hit the subscribe button. If you're a big Mets fan, you want to know what's going on with the Mets every single day, you'll get a video on this channel at least once a day. As we get now we're about to hit the offseason, you're going to get videos all day long. You're going to have so much stuff here, you won't believe it. I don't believe it myself half the time. Headline, Mets predicted to have historic offseason spending spree. So that Steve Cohen money is going to be flowing pretty good. New York Mets have been predicted to set a new precedent and off-season spending this winter, oh, I can't wait. I know you can't wait either. It's no secret that the New York Mets and their owner, Steve Cohen, has a lot of money. And he's willing to spend it on his beloved MLB franchise. The Mets have baseball's biggest payroll and had baseball's biggest payroll in 2024. But with many of the massive contracts included in that payroll, including Max Scherz and Justin Verlander, gone. New York is well positioned to make major moves on the open market this offseason. An October 28th article from Bleacher Report's Kerry Miller predicted that the Mets will set a new record with their spending this winter. Quote, the New York Mets are going to match the more than $1 billion in contracts for free agents that the Dodgers agreed to last offseason, Miller wrote. Becoming the first team to sign at least three free agents to nine-figure contracts in one year, however, is well within the realm of possibility. Holy hell. Miller added later, if it becomes clear that Soto isn't happening for the Mets, though, Steve Cohen isn't going to just pack it in and embrace heading into 2025 with a modest payroll. He's going to re-sign Pete Alonso for around $200 million. It seems that Pete and... Um, Pete and... One subtle kind of separate things. Uh, and as you remember, uh, the Mets lost out, believe it or not, in 2021 from signing Stephen Matz. Um, and the Mets and Steve Cohen were so angry, he posted something nasty on, on X, or it used to be Twitter. And then the Mets pivoted and they signed Max Scherzer, which was a surprise to everybody but your host. I would mention, your host who had that... Uh, the Mets signed him two weeks prior to them signing him. So I still have that video on this channel. You need to check it out. Quote, he's going to get at least one, possibly two, of Corbin Burns, Max Freed, Blake Snell, and Gary Cole to address the fact that all three of this season's team leaders in innings pitched are now pitched are now free agents. All four of those pitchers figured to sign for at least $100 million. Now, it's a little, it's a little tricky. you got older pitchers here. These guys are in their 30s. Uh, the one thing about the guys that pitched this year, Luis Severino, uh, Mets got real lucky with him. He hadn't pitched in a, in a full season in a long time. Um, Sean Manaya has been sort of was kind of a reclamation project this year, and he pitched great this year. He was a Mets ace. Uh, and Jose Quintana was up and down. He's, he's basically a 500 pitcher his whole career. He's a guy that either pitches really great or doesn't pitch so great. That's been his career. And we, the Mets had David Peterson take a major step forward. Uh, so he's going to be in the rotation. And the Mets are going to have Kodai Senga back. So it'll be interesting to see. You might see a combination of one or two of these guys. I don't think it would be three. And they'll hopefully try to resign Manaya <clears throat> and uh, hope that uh, Senga comes back as, you know, as a healthy pitcher. And also keep in mind the Mets like to have a lot of depth in their organization pitching-wise. So that's something also... Uh, to keep in mind as we get into the offseason. Mets did a great job with the depth of this organization. That's the one thing that has been, especially on the pitching side, uh, David Stearns did a great job as opposed to the pre previous guy in charge, Billy Apple, with the pitching. 
And he's going to add one more of the top outfield DH bats available. As Harrison Bader and J.D. Martinez were one-year stop gaps, stop gap solutions. And Stalin Marte isn't getting any younger or better. Whether that's Tesco Hernandez, Anthony Santander, or maybe Cody Bellinger. If he declines his player option with the Cubs, nine figures on a five-year deal could be in play for any mem- member of that trio. Uh, I would mention, <clears throat> Stalin Marte has one year left on his contract. I think the Mets are probably going to move him. <clears throat> I think the Mets are going to probably move Stalling, uh, eat some of his money, and move him. That's my opinion. I think it's the smart move to do. Um, he's always hurt, but he's very helpful when he's healthy. That's the one thing. And I would also mention that Jeff McNeil has two years left on his contract for $30 million. I can see the Mets eating some of that money and moving him, too. So just keep that in mind. So a lot of money's going a lot of money's gonna be moving around with the Mets. Uh, Miller concluded the article by writing, uh, quote, long story short, the Mets will be very busy and they won't be sneaking up on anyone as an underdog in twenty twenty five. Mets fans must be liking the sound of that. I know I do. Um uh, it was very tough last year, last off season. But so many people were so angry. Um uh, that they felt betrayed by by Mets owner Steve Cohen. You know, he, and then he brought in this guy from the Brewers. And so many people complain that nah, the Mets can be run like the Brewers. Well, I would mention the Brewers were always a playoff team. And the Mets made the playoffs the first year of David Stearns. And and mostly is because they, his thing, they made a lot of smart moves. Obviously the pitching. But in terms of just the sort of the personality of the team. We know in 2022 there was some dead weight on this club. And 2023 there was more dead weight on this, on this club. And they got rid of some of these bad apples, these bad sort of just guys that just they didn't have any roles in the majors. They were really they weren't major league players. And they had like these big roles on the Mets. And the Mets sort of kind of as the previous general manager seemed to refuse to get rid of them. And you have the general manager now, a guy running the club, and David Stearns, who was uh has no problem getting rid of people. He'll sign you if you don't play well. He gets rid of you. Okay, he doesn't. He doesn't care about if he eats the money. <clears throat> and and they changed the personality of this team. Jose Iglesias, Luis Torrens, Luis Severino, uh, J.D. Martinez, in particular. I, I highlight them particularly. These guys they brought in, and not just so much that the, their talent was important for this club, but how, what they provided in the Mets clubhouse. It seemed to be these guys were very important to this Mets club, and Stalin Marte too. Uh, that they were very important for Francisco and Lindor to relax. Because we know that Lindor's had a very difficult time here uh, being the guy. Well, now he's the man. <laughs> you know, he, he had a problem being the guy, but now he's the man here. This is his team. And, and ha- them being here uh, in particular, I think, is going to calm him down moving forward into the future, even if they're not here next year. He knows now what he needs to do to be successful here. Just in terms of, now he, he's been, he's always said the right things. He's always uh, done the right things, you know, in the clubhouse, on the on the field, in terms of how he conducted himself like a gentleman. Now he's doing it at the plate. He's doing it in a big way. And that is tremendous. So, so if the, whoever the Mets bring in uh, next year has to be able to sort of uh, augment what the Mets are trying to do here, and that's trying to win a World Series and being like the Dodgers. That's been the goal of this ownership uh, since he walked in the door. And the fact that they played the Dodgers in the NLCS it tells me that they're going in the right direction. That is a big thing. The Mets, that's going to be the, big, the biggest Mets challenge next year is beating the Dodgers. It really is. But what do you think about the Mets spending uh, the most money in baseball history? Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. You know. And uh, you let me know what you think about that. Hit the subscribe button before you go. Have a good day, and I'll see you later.